Hello and welcome to Left Right Center. I'm Sean Boyd. The races are over, now the reckoning begins. Let's start at the top of the ticket with former President Donald Trump's decisive win. While Trump is on track to sweep all seven swing states, Colorado defied the national trend toward Republicans. Vice President Kamala Harris won Colorado by 11 points, three points less than President Biden did in 2020. An exit poll by the bipartisan Colorado Polling Institute found Trump won voters over 65, while Harris won those under 45. She also won Latinos by 36 points here and women by 25 points while they tied among men. Nationally, CBS's exit polls found a different story. Harris won Latinos by only six points and women by only eight points, while Trump won men by 13 points. The candidates were tied among voters ages 30 to 44 and 65 and older. Joining me are analysts, Republican Dick Wadhams and Democrat Mike Dino. <laughs> I'm still a Democrat. It's been a, lo it's a, been, Democrat, a, proud it's been a long election cycle. <laughs> so, you know, Mike, nationally, um, exit polls showed Trump gaining ground among you know, virtually every voting bloc mm -hmm. out there. You know, you've got Latinos and blacks, um, those with and without a college education, even suburban women and the younger voters this year. There's no shortage of opinions about where Democrats went wrong this year. Um, what do you see as their biggest failing, and how do they turn this around? Well, you know, it was just really hard to make up a lot of ground on inflation. Uh, it, it really settled in, um, uh, you know, it began to get better, but people didn't feel it, particularly in the swing states. And, and I think what we're hearing from people in interviews that are out there is that they held that against Biden and, and ultimately against Harris. And, uh, that wasn't a winnable uh, uh, issue for him, and they tried to find some other issues, uh, democracy, saving democracy, moving forward, we can't have this guy again. And, abortion and the, was yeah, a big abortion, issue? Yeah, abortion, and those things registered, but, but when it came down to people, uh, you know, looked at their pocketbooks, <clears throat> looked at what they spend when they go to the store, and they just weren't happy. Dick, you know, Senator Bernie Sanders said Democrats are too focused on identity politics and not the working class economic concerns. I think one of the more effective ads that Trump ran was about Harris supporting taxpayer funding for sex changes for prisoners. And then uh, there was another ad regarding uh, transgender issues saying, you know, she's for them and, and Trump is for you, us, right? Um, how much of Trump's success do you think was due to the an over emphasis maybe on these woke, so-called woke issues? I think it was a huge part of it, Sean. <clears throat> and, and, you know, the Democrats like to to characterize any time you talk about uh, transgenders playing in, in girls sports as anti-transgender. It's not. It's a matter of fairness. In fact, in fact, I think one of Boebert's, one of her most effective ads was a, an ad where a young female high school athlete from the district said, I'm voting for Congresswoman Bo Boebert because she does not want, I don't, she's not going to have boys playing against me in my sport. I think that was very effective. And I think the Democrats have just gone overboard on this. And everybody believes, I believe, that transgenders should have the right as everybody else. But, but uh, this notion that that uh, uh, boys should be playing girls' sports is just wrong, and I think the I think I think I think the Democrats are going to change their tune on this. Let's well, see, Mike. While people think of Republicans as the party of wealthy, Harris did better among the affluent suburbanites, while Trump did better among the working class. Are Democrats now the party of the rich? I mean, is this flipped? And, and while they talk a lot about racial and gender equality, have they la lost sight of class inequality? Well, I, I, I hate to belabor it, but again, you know, that, that points to the inflation issue. Yeah. Uh, wealthy people have felt it less. I mean, and they can, sp they can deal with higher prices, and they have. And certainly those, uh, you know, that uh, are living, you know, uh, paycheck to paycheck have a challenge, and then Trump uh, really related to them. I also agree with Nancy Pelosi uh, that, you know, by and large, the Democrats are stuck on cultural issues uh, too much mm -hmm. and, and probably need to get back to some of the issues that people feel in their pocketbooks. Uh, don't dwell on the culture issues. You know, Dick has a point there. I mean, I, I think, you know, transgender uh, uh, rights and, and uh, certainly recognition is important. 
But uh, to overly dwell on it, as, as some Democrats do, uh, plays against them. Yeah, that's what Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. you know, he mm -hmm. said there's this overemphasis on it. Yeah. Uh, Dick, exit polls, including one by the Colorado Polling Institute, found abortion was one of the top three issues for voters. What's interesting is a CBS exit poll found Harris and Trump tied among voters who feel that abortion should be legal in most cases. What do you make of that? Part of it is Trump successfully kind of obfuscated the issue uh, he, when he said, I don't support a national ban on abortion. And he, said, and, he re, and he was very consistent on that, something new and unique for him. But he did a good job on that. And I think, I think that um, uh, even pro-choice voters uh, to Mike's point, they they were more concerned about inflation in this. I mean, they didn't feel the threat of a Donald Trump on abortion, and so he was able to get to even pro-choice voters to vote for him if they were concerned more concerned about the economy. Mike Trump ran a very much testosterone fueled mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. campaign. Um, was Harris lost um, because the country is still not ready for a woman in the White House? You know, I think, uh, first of all, I'm just very proud the Democrats nominated a woman again to run for president, and a woman of color. I think that's a big deal. And I, th I hope the Democrats continue to do that. Um, uh, you know, who knows if the country's ready? I mean, certainly there's parts of the country that aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, Trump is just a different type of person that, that our nation has really never seen. He, you know, he, he runs as Trump, whether, you know, you view it as testosterone-fueled <laughs> or maniacal, whatever, he's Trump. It's a unique brand, and, uh, you know, it was going to be hard to beat him. I, I think we gave ourselves a chance, considering everything. Um, and uh, it just didn't come up uh, to the way we wanted it to. Well, especially with Biden dropping out, yeah. Soleil's here, yeah. Harris getting and in. And certainly Soleil. there's criticism of that, too. Right. Dick Trump won without doing any <laughs> interviews with the mainstream media outlets, which, um, believe it or not, rank below Congress in terms of public trust. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> is this a moment of reckoning, do you think, for mainstream media? I do. Um, and, and I'm not anti-media, but I, I got to tell you that you watch the media so often and they ooze anti-Trump and anti-Republican so often. And, I, I, and it's, it's a shame. But what's, what's interesting to me, Sean, is that we've now learned that Baron Trump, Trump's son, was advising the, pres the former president on what podcasts to, to listen to <laughs> that, that attracted young males. Yeah. And, and they really do attribute, uh, apparently Trump was doing a lot of these podcasts. And, and that, that's one of the reasons they think they did well with young men, mm -hmm. which is fascinating that Barron was a big part of that campaign. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, you think of him as so little, I do still, from 2016. You yeah, know. Well, he's almost yeah. five inches taller than his dad. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, coming up, Colorado's new swing counties and how all eyes are on a Colorado congressional race with control of the U.S. House hanging in the balance. Welcome back to Left Right Center. The biggest race in Colorado this year was in Congressional District 8, which lived up to its billing as one of the most competitive districts in the country. As of Saturday afternoon, Republican Gabe Evans is ahead by only about 2,000 votes, but Adams County still has 10 to 14,000 votes to count. So Dick Harris won Adams County by 10 points and Larimer by 17 points. Welcome back to Left Right Center. The biggest race in Colorado this year was in Congressional District 8, which lived up to its billing as one of the most competitive districts in the country. As of Saturday afternoon, Republican Gabe Evans is ahead by only about 2,000 votes, but Adams County still has 10 to 14,000 votes to count. 
So, Dick, we have three counties in Congressional District 8, uh, Harris won. Adams by about 10 points, Larimer by 17 points, Trump won Weld by nearly 20 points. How did the presidential candidates impact Caraveo and Evans? I'm not sure it did, Sean, huh? because the, the polling going into that that showed the two uh, congressional candidates like this also showed the presidential race was like that. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure it had any impact. You know, I think, I think the 8th congressional district might be this way every two years, regardless of who gets elected. That I, which would be magnificent. We should have, frankly, I wish all eight congressional districts in Colorado <laughs> would be totally competitive oh gosh, every eight years, no. or every two years. <laughs> you're, you're having a headache yeah. now, are you? <laughs> yeah, no, this, this one has been exhausting enough. I mean, here we are sitting here on a Saturday afternoon, how right. many days after the election, still waiting for the results. Mike, voters in Adams County shot down affordable housing and school tax measures. Cost of living is a top issue this election. At the same time, the Colorado Polling Institute found that um, Latinos in Adams County stuck with the Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of that? You know, that they're, you know, fiscally conservative, they're voting Democrat, mm -hmm. though. Well, I've been doing politics for 35 <laughs> years, so I'll never figure out Adams <laughs> County. I, I grew up in North Denver, but it's still over the border and it's a complicated place. But it gets back to the pocketbook issues. It is a very working class county. And so I think they're always very supportive of Democrats. They have five Democratic county commissioners mm -hmm. and all, most of their representatives and senators are Democratic. And so the bottom line it comes down to is is, uh, they like voting for Democrats. They just don't like voting for pocketbook issues. Interesting. But two traditionally Republican counties in Colorado continue to move left to this election. Trump won Douglas by only about seven points and El Paso by nine points. Two counties he won by 18 and 23 points in 2016. Meanwhile, Harris won Jeffco and Arapaho by 20 points. So, Mike, you know, are Douglas and El Paso <laughs> becoming more liberal or is this a Trump phenomenon? No, I do think uh, we're a very urbanized state, and when you look at El Paso uh, and Carta Springs, they elected a, a, a non-Republican as mayor uh, last year for the first time in a long time, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of folks are you know moving into areas uh, from other states uh, uh, in Douglas and El Paso, and and balancing out the political equation. So let's talk about maybe the new swing counties here. <laughs> Trump won Garfield County by seven points in 2016 and lost it by two points this year, where Grand Junction is. So, no, Grand Junction's in no, Mesa. Mesa. That's, That's right. So but Glenwood Garfield, Springs. Garfield. But, but, yeah, Garfield, yeah. yeah, right, Glenwood Springs. But Garfield is a traditionally Republican over time, <laughs> if you're looking right. Yeah, it's been going, it's been shifting left, yeah. though. Yeah. So meanwhile, he lost Pueblo by less than a point in 2016. He right. won it by four points this year. Right. So are these the new swing counties? Well, Pueblo's been moving right for some time now. And uh, and, and actually, Pueblo did more than just uh, carry Trump. They elected a district attorney in an open seat down there. They also elected a a, a second Republican county commissioner, so they have a majority of the county commissioners now in Pueblo County. And so, now Pueblo, there was a, you talk about uh, working class, blue collar Democrats, they have been shifting right over the, now I, I grew up in Southern Colorado and went to college in Pueblo, so uh, it's, uh, it's amazing for me to watch this. But the, by the way, the Republican chairman there, Michelle Gray, outstanding chair. And, and, and she's had to do it by herself because there's no support from Dave Williams and the Colorado <laughs> Republican Party. But she has done an outstanding job down there. Yeah, it's amazing how well Republicans did yes. overall, given they had zero support. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for watching Left, Right, Center throughout this election year. And thank you to our analysts. We have the best in the business, really. I hope you found the analysis informative, balanced, and as always here, simple.